In this tutorial, I'll show you how to do some really cool title effect animations using Red 5 and Sony Vegas Pro. Hey, how's it going? Here I am in Sony Vegas and I'm going to show you how to create some really cool titling effects using Boris Red 5. So what you see here is the end result of what we're going to create. Um, some very stylized effects. This one's my favorite. I like to call it the smoky particle effect. Uh, we're going to create each of these from scratch using just Boris Red. Okay, so let me start by deleting this filter. Here's a nice uh, shot of a flower that I took some time ago. And we're going to cover it up with the title. And we're going to hide it completely. <laughs> okay, so let's create a title. Here I am in red by clicking on the T there. Let's uh, create some new text for you about smoky titles. Looks good. Now note that in this window here I can create I can edit all these different things about the text. Tracking, lighting, font, um, baseline, justification, fill. Uh, all these different things are fully customizable. I'm gonna leave the text the way it is but you can change all those things if you want. Okay so we've got our text now let's make it look really smoky and wispy. I'm going to do that by adding a couple filters. The first one is BCC Gaussian Blur. And I'm going to animate just the horizontal aspect of the blur. Now notice that red is automatically creating keyframes for me. That's because I'm in keyframe mode. You can disable that mode if you don't like it, but it'll make things a lot faster today. And I'm going to push this well beyond the 100 suggested maximum to, let's say, I don't know, 362. Perfect. All right. And we're going to stop the blur here. And we're going to start it again here just by telling it to uh, accelerate. And at the end, back to like 362 or 9. Okay. So there's the blur aspect of the effect. Now, one of the cool things about Red 5 is that it comes with this keyframe uh, interpolation graph. So I can edit the keyframes and their handles by just clicking and dragging in this uh, graph here. So it's a really convenient way to do animations. Let me do the next one for you using the keyframe graph. Okay, we also need to add a wave effect to this. So I'll go to Distortion Perspective, add BCC Wave. Okay, there it is, right? Now, first thing I want to do is increase the wave width. Actually, I don't want this to be animated, so I'm going to change this interpolation to constant. All right. So now the waves are just nice and big. They look a little bit more like wind or something. Next, we are going to animate the perpendicular height of the wave. So I'll just create a little bit of something there, and then go forward to just after when the blur stops. I'm going to create a new keyframe in the graph by clicking control and clicking there. And at this point, I'm going to use the help of smart mode. So uh, BCC wave, wave width, wave perpendicular height. There we go. I'm just going to change this to zero. Okay, watch this. I'm going to change the interpolation here to hold makes that a lot nicer for me. Create another keyframe here and then at the end, make sure I deselected that, uh, just create another one and put it back up. Okay, notice it's still using the hold interpolation so I can change that here and just do another uh, accelerate. It should look nice. So it matches the motion of the blur. Okay. Now, of course, you can tweak the timing however you like it. You might want to make the wave even lazier, maybe a little bit more subtle. Um, whatever you like is what you can do. It's your effect, right? But one more thing has to be done. We have to make the title disappear and reappear, but not in that order. So I'm going to make it start with zero opacity, make sure it comes up so that we can see it. You can hold it there. It's fine. And then around this point, we'll start fading it out again so that it goes away. 
and that's it. So if I wasn't describing this to you, it could have been done even quicker, but as so, um, as it was, that didn't take me very long at all. All right, that was the first effect. Let's try the second one. So we have this impressive 3D shatter effect. Let's see how that is created in red. Okay, so here's the effect in red. It's got a little bit of a motion effect on it as well, and then the cool shatter and glow effect. Okay, I'm going to just basically delete everything again. Start over. This time, type something new. Uh, to be ironic, I guess. Okay, so we have our text, and let's just go into track mode for now. Let's add that filter. First thing I want to do is add the 3D image shatter filter. You can see it automatically shatters my text. Another thing I want to point out is that this is a real 3D shatter. Like if I go into the track and rotate it, you can actually see the shards are, you know, there. So it it is cool that you can rotate and get different angles. You might want to take advantage of that when you set up your effect. I'm going to leave it relatively flat for this though. Okay, so I don't want it to just explode. I want it to actually destroy in an orderly fashion. So I'm going to go into the scatter wipe mode, turn it on, and set the angle so that it goes left to right. And I don't actually want to keyframe that, so I'll just set that to constant. Okay, there it is. Now it's automatically doing the shatter for me, but sometimes you need to control the timing very precisely. So in that case, you want to select manual instead of automatic, and then just create some keyframes for the, sc for the scatter. So I'm going to start at zero there. I can use this on-screen control also to change parameters. I'm using it now so I can look at the screen while I'm changing it. And that's that's what I want right there. And you can also change how much it bursts, uh, how it bursts, etc. Um, I think the default setting works well for this one. And also note that these are transparent shards. So if you have media in the background, like this flower from Vegas, you can still see it. That could be useful too. All right, so we have our shatter. Now let's put a colorized glow on it. Now one thing I'm going to do to speed up this process is I'm just going to shorten the whole glow filter to just about when it's shattering. So notice I'm changing the end keyframes of this effect. It's basically like a piece of media in this timeline, like I can reposition it. Uh, that's another cool feature of RED, the ability to manipulate filters as separate tracks. Okay, I am going to keyframe uh, the intensity because I want it to start regular. Here I'll boost it up. Notice I'm using the on-screen controls for this. Soften it up. And a few of the controls aren't on there because it would clutter everything if we put them all there, but put some overdrive in there. Constant. Maybe turn up the threshold a little. Okay. Ah, damn, I had the first keyframe selected that whole time. Did I? No, I didn't. Okay, scared me there. Cool. And there it is. And of course, there was a little bit of a motion um, happening in the beginning. That was just done in this tab here. I think it was merely a scale change. Again, I'm in auto animate mode, so any change I make will automatically animate. Set that to 100 there. And it doesn't really matter if it, uh, you know, collapses. And let's also put a slight rotation on it, shall we? So that it's not entirely flat. There you go. It's nicer. Okay. So, two for two. Now let's take a look at my favorite one, the uh, smoking particle disappearing text. I think it has a more precise name in our filter list, but let's let's see. Okay, so there's a lot going on in this timeline. Uh, we have title animation coming from two opposite directions, and of course the cool disappearing effect. So we're going to have to do a few new things in this track. Okay, I'm going to delete everything, start from fresh. All right, so let's just say this is great. 
and underneath it, something to complement that. Um, calorie intake. I don't know. All right, so we have two uh, great sentences here, or words. What I want to do first is create the animation for these two. I'm just going to have them start above or below. Notice I'm, gonna, I'm using on-screen controls again to reposition my text. We'll have them meet up about here. And I want them to stay put so that they will hold there. Okay, so there's that. Now, let's apply the 2D uh, particles. This is the, you know, shattering effect, if you will, or the disintegration. It works just like the 3D image shatter did, so I'm going to set it up the same way. I'm going to use a scatter wipe mode. I'm going to set this angle to about 270, make it constant. And like the 3D shatter, I'm going to set it to manual. And I'm going to use the on-screen control to judge when it should be done. OK, one difference here. I am going to slow these down a lot more than the 3D shatter did, because I don't want the particles to get too far away too quickly. I mean, I want it to be like wispy smoke, so I don't want it to go you know, too far. Oh, and because I didn't use the last keyframe, it went back to the original. But there we go. Great. Now, let's put some gravity into the equation. Uh, it's supposed to be smoke, so let's make it negative gravity. You know, that negative gravity that you run into sometimes. It's really annoying. Okay. That's actually a bit too strong, I think, for the negative gravity. Let's just make it negative, I don't know, 50? Hey, huh, that's weird. I didn't even change anything. Um, but that's perfect. Great. Okay, so we have our 2D particles there. Now, let's make it look like smoke by adding a blur filter. So I'm going to add BCC Pyramid Blur, a nice quick blur. I'm going to unlock the horizontal and vertical. I'm going to make the vertical much more this time. But we do want to have some horizontal in there too. Okay, and now you can see it's blurring the whole text, and we don't want that. Well, we're going to use a special feature called Pixel Chooser to mask the effect. So what I want to do is set the shape of the Pixel Chooser. First, got to turn it on. And now I'm going to use a linear gradient shape. Now what that's doing is it's hiding the effect um, to the white area or region of, of this mask. And I can animate the position of this mask too. So that's what I'm going to do to animate the blur effect. I can see how it affects the real image underneath, like so. And I can also change the distance of the gradient, make it a little bit more subtle or abrupt. OK, so now let's position this where it should be. We want to hide all of the sharp edges on the pixels. But we don't want to blur much of the text before it needs to be there. OK, so there's going to be some overlap. But I think that will work pretty well. OK, this is another good time to use the graph mode, I think. So I can just copy and paste this keyframe at the beginning of the timeline and set this interpolation to hold. Um, hold was the wrong idea, because that was still too close to the edge. Let's do linear, Let's back it off. Still too close. Go back. There we go. Still too close. But you know what? I'll just create a new one right here. There we go. And whoosh. Nice. And afterwards, of course, copy. Actually, you know what? I'll just make it a hold keyframe. See, all these easy ways to do these things. And it should be a little bit further out 
and a little bit further in the timeline too. Okay, so I, I left a little bit of the uh, sharp 2D particles there, but it still works. We're going to mask this further by adding a colorized glow effect. And this time it's just going to be a little bit before the uh, smoke. It's going to kind of make it look like it's a fiery incineration. So the smoke starts about here. So we'll just start that there with no intensity. And then as soon as it reaches that level, turn the intensity up. And I actually like how that looks with the smoke on as well. Uh, let's increase the overdrive constant too much. All right. Okay, so there's our basic smoke effect. And just for good measure, let's put that wave back in there because wave is just a good effect. That's great. All right, so just kind of wave the smoke at the end. Again, we want a lot of width to hide the ripples. Constant, and we'll animate the width up from the height up from nothing. Kind of make it dissipate. Oh, I had that selected, didn't I? Okay, so zero there. Deselect that. Go ahead, and then. You know, I could be using this program all day, and it's the little things that you still kind of miss sometimes. Okay, and of course, we want to hide the uh, transparency of the whole thing, but we don't have to worry about that just yet. Now, we want to take all this stuff and put it in a container. So let me select all these. Just put them in a 3D container. So now, I can conveniently rotate around and get a different angle on everything. Now, I want to just create a keyframe at the end, so there's a smooth motion happening throughout. Should do. I think it maybe started with a m bigger angle last time. Yeah, it definitely had more of a tumble. And more of a spin, too, actually. All right. And to make the whole thing uh, transparent, I'm just going to, you know, tune that out at the end. Because after all, this is still based on the text filters. So if you hide them, you hide the effects. All right, and there it is. So lots of different unique effects on text, all done with Boris Red in Vegas Pro. Now, if you liked what you saw here today, you can try this program for free for 14 days. And so you can download that at borseffects.com.